subsequent notice of this meeting has been provided to the Coast Star, the official newspaper of the Borough of Belmar, and the Asbury Park Press on December 2nd, 2020, and notice of this meeting was posted on the bulletin board in the municipal building. Everybody could join me in saluting the flag of our great nation. The only thing that I have on workshop, if everybody uh, sees we have a first reading on uh, uh, rescinding the ordinance for uh, eminent domain that we put into place after we got the, uh, the petition, you know, we had discussed it and um, said, you know what, let's, let's continue to negotiate without it. So we got first reading on for tonight, um, but we'll continue to negotiate without using the eminent domain. Anybody else got anything? I mean, that's really the only thing I have on the workshop tonight. All right, we'll move on. Uh, April, on the petitions. I received a petition for a request for stop signs at the intersections of 9th Avenue and C Street and 10th Avenue and C Street. Um, that has been circulated to all of you. And then also just to note that um, I had provided to the council the certification of the referendum petition and protest of ordinance 2021-17, which you just addressed is on for repeal tonight. Thank you. Uh, approval of minutes. Could I have a motion to approve the August 3rd, 2021 minutes? I'll make the motion. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So April, I wasn't at that meeting, so I need to abstain. Does that mean you have enough votes to pass it? No, right? We need them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <I'm> abstain. <laughs> okay. Reports to council. Uh, Councilmember Kraken. Uh, not much to report. We're in the lazy, hazy days of. August, I've been trying to, like many other people in our town who I've seen out and about, enjoy our beautiful community. Um, we will have uh, the Shade Tree Commission this month is canceled. The next meeting will be the third week of uh, September. And the next scheduled Housing Authority meeting uh, is the first Monday of the month, but that's Labor Day this year, so I'm going to have to verify with them exactly when the next meeting is, if they're moving it to the... Uh, the next day or or um, having it on the holiday that's about it okay thank you uh, councilman Brown. thank you mr mayor um harbor commission meeting canceled lack of quorum environmental commission meeting canceled lack of quorum august is when everybody goes away so uh, the only thing i really have to shout I, I have to give a big shout out to our recreation director barry trogers many of you might know uh, my friends in my band that I were playing Friday night in the plaza and the power was out for a little while it was oh so exciting and Barry was right there from the get-go and he made sure everything was going to work smoothly and then the power came on and it was we all had a great time so thanks Barry that's my report all right thank you uh, the only thing I have is our fireworks are being moved to uh, Labor Day September 3rd on a Friday night uh, with the rain date of Saturday and hopefully we can get them shot off it's been up in a great summer but uh so we're moving into there uh the five mile run is set for september 4th and uh the kids run is uh before the fireworks on that friday night uh, uh september 3rd um i know i've been talking about volunteers for the for the uh 2022 uh, 150th anniversary and um, I know there's been some talk that uh, Mary Brabazon has been having meetings, but she, it's not with the volunteers yet. Uh, she's been meeting with all the department heads and getting all everything all set up before the volunteers start. 
once she has all that in place, then she'll be reaching out to get a list of volunteers. But uh, the library is going to do so much. The Historical Society is going to do so much. The uh, Belmar is going to do so much. So once she has all that in place with uh, everything going on, then she's going to uh, reach out for volunteers uh, to work with all the different groups so whoever needs them they'll have a list of volunteers to put out that they need five or ten people or whatever they're doing to run these uh, events that they're going to do throughout the year so she's working on that anybody that wants a volunteer just hold tight uh we'll be she'll be putting it out to uh, get everybody's information and who wants to volunteer for next year so i know there was a couple questions that came to me about that so i just wanted to explain that um other than that we're coming into the end of the summer and uh, everything went pretty well. Oh, the one thing I do want to mention, uh, George Kamidis, uh was yesterday, right, Ed? Yes, sir. Uh, we had one of our uh, gate attendants who was a floater, um, fell to the ground in a medical emergency. George was right there to start CPR. Our first aid showed up right away, and I'm happy to say that um, he made it to the hospital, and he's doing fine. So. Yeah. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks to George for being right there and starting the CPR, and uh, he did a great job. And I just wanted to mention that. Yeah, thank you. And I think that's all I have. So we'll move on to uh, uh, public session on any of the resolution items. All right, April, seeing none. Can I have a motion to close the public session? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Can I have a motion to approve the resolutions as listed on the consent agenda? Uh, second. Okay, Councilman Brennan? Yes. Councilman McCracken? Yes. Mayor Walsifer? Yes. Okay. Uh, next is second reading and public hearing on ordinance 2021-27. This is amending the no-knock ordinance. It's open for public comment if anyone would like to speak on it. Can I have a motion to close the public hearing? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And a motion to adopt ordinance 2021-27. I'll make the motion, but I just got a question. Do we have the uh, the dates changed for that? I know it was uh, for the times. Yes. I mean, not, not dates, times. The time, yep. Times are all changing there? Okay, great. Yep, all right, good. Okay, and do I have a second? Second. Okay, Councilman Brennan? Yes. Councilman McCracken? Mayor Walsifer. Yes. Next is first reading and introduction on ordinance 2021-28, amending chapter 19 traffic, um, adding additional stop intersections. We have a motion to offer for first reading. I'll make the motion. Second. Okay. Councilman Brennan. Yes. Councilman McCracken. Yes. Mayor Walsifer. Yes. And last is ordinance 2021-29, an ordinance um, for re to repeal ordinance 2021-17. <clears throat> Can I have a motion to offer for first reading and introduction? Make a motion. And a second? Second. <laughs> Councilman Brennan? Yes. Councilman McCracken? Yes. Mayor Walsifer? Yes. All right, uh, public session. Yes, Bruce. Thank you. <clears throat> Public session on anything, right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. 407 Ninth Avenue, Bruce Blattner. Uh Just a reminder that we're having a concert this Thursday. Really good band. <laughs> Super <laughs> band. <you> Tommy <laughs> B and the Deep Blue Sea at the library. So it. hot All dogs, right. uh, water, chips being done. So and just let everybody know. And, and what's the rain date? That I'm not sure. At 26th, the following okay. Thursday. Thank you. Because I think Fred's coming. Thank you very much. You and one other Talk. quick thing, uh, Captain, I'm just going to mention about that PBA food drive. Is that all right? Thank you. Uh, the food drive that we've been doing on Monday evenings, I've been volunteering. Uh, it's through the PBA and a grant from the state of New Jersey. I'm not a member of the PBA or anything, but I just volunteer at time. And uh, the food drive is two more Monday nights for anybody who knows of any people in need, please come out uh, because there's always a lot of food and they give out milk and all kinds of food at 6.30 to 8.30, just a reminder. Next Monday, I believe the 23rd and 30th, and that's 
just two more Monday evenings, just for your information. All right. Thanks, Bruce. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. Uh, Gerald Buckafusco, 409 Fifth Avenue. Uh, just a question I think uh, many people are probably asking themselves right now uh, concerning 2021-29. Assuming that is passed in the next, uh, at the next meeting, can somebody give us a, an idea of, number one, uh, what effect this would have on future purchase of the, of the first aid squad property and what effect it would have on the, um, the town's right to uh, take the property through eminent domain. And finally, um, <clears throat> what relevance does this um, have with regard to the, to the referendum petition? <clears throat> yeah, go ahead, Patrick. So, okay. So I'm going to go in just reverse or, reverse order, um, just because the referendum is the easiest one to answer. Um, so when a referendum is validly certified by the borough clerk, which was done earlier this evening, um, how it proceeds under the applicable statutes is it would go to the um, to the ballot to be voted upon. However, when something is certified as a valid referendum petition, it rem the ordinance itself is suspended up until it's either A, repealed, or B, voted upon at the ballot. So rather than waiting up until the point it is voted upon at the ballot, the borough council took action tonight to repeal it in its entirety pursuant to the applicable provisions underneath the uh, referendum statute, which I believe is one section 183 to 189 of 63A under 40, 48A 63-183-ish. Um, so then second, the effect of... Well, just a question. So that means the referendum will or will not go forward? The referendum will not go forward on the effect of whether Ordinance 2021-17 should be repealed or left alone because it's already being, it's in the process of being repealed. That was the purpose of introducing it on okay. first reading. Mm -hmm. um, the second question you posed was the effect of eminent domain um, moving forward and whether or not the borough would be permitted to pursue any additional eminent domain actions should the need or the opportunity to arise. And the short answer is yes. In the event the borough does elect that they want to proceed through eminent domain, there's no statutory bar on taking that course of action. Whether the borough does or does not, I, I don't know. Um, that's not in the plans right now. The plans was to... they. They mm -hmm. saw the petition and they um, they want to try to negotiate without that hanging over uh, the borough for a state squad. Second or third is the uh, the effect on future purchases. Um, that's a hard one to answer because I don't know what the effect of it would be on future purchases because there's always the fear once an eminent domain action is instituted or in initiated that there is going to be a subsequent eminent domain proceeding. One of the per one of the things that when you are going out and you are bidding for properties, you do have to indicate whether or not this property is subject to any future or potential eminent domain um, proceedings. Given the fact that one's already been initiated, um, it is possible that you would have to certify that yes, it is possible that this property could be subject to eminent domain. Um, could that possibly deter future bidders? Um, certainly. Could it not? As well, also, you can't. You don't know what you don't know at this, at this, at this point. My question, though, was, you answered part of it. I, I think I was more determined to find out what what would happen if the town wanted to purchase it again. Would they need to pass another ordinance similar to twenty twenty one dash seventeen? No. So twenty twenty one dash seventeen was um, for purposes of implementing eminent domain. At this point, um, the town can negotiate with. Um, the five with the, the Belmont First Aid Squad to see if we can come to a reasonable agreement um, and to be able to enter into a purchase agreement at which time the borough would have to just adopt another ordinance authorizing the acquisition That's through through a normal, basically like buying a house at that point. Right. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Anyone else? Hi, Maria Rondonaro, 1246 Pine Tree Way. Um, I just wanted to also thank Barry for a wonderful job with Belmar Summer Camp. Um, my daughter thoroughly enjoyed it, and so did the other campers, so thank you. 
Um, I, I wanted to make mention, I know this isn't the first time, but according to Commissioner Director Arnone, um, between August 12th to August 16th, there's been 590 new positive cases of COVID-19 in Monmouth County. Um, I would request that we please resume an option for Zoom. Um, and I am wondering what safety protocols and communications we're looking into to prepare for this next wave, which is sadly upon us already. This is Administrator Kirschenbaum. Uh, you've been keeping up on all that. <clears throat> yes, we have. Uh, our whole team is continuing to monitor what the guidelines are from the state of New Jersey, from the governor's office. Any orders that are uh, executive orders that are put out will follow. Uh, we've been uh, in touch with our department heads. We sent out the procedures for the CDC in regards to any type of uh, exposure or what they should do in regards to anybody catching COVID. So we maintain with our department heads and communication with the state uh, and the health department to make sure that we're in compliance with everything. Okay, I mean, that, that's wonderful to keep abreast of what is coming from the state, but what about what we can do as a town? What kind of communication can we put up as a town? You know, the last year I was asking for extra signs for our businesses, for more communication through Code Red, um, for more options for vaccination sites. Um, I know that this is n not something we've, you know, dealt with before, but now we can actually say that we've dealt with this before. Well, we've also, we had uh, vaccines at our last uh, farmer's market. We had that out there. And we had a conference call, myself and the mayor had a conference call with the governor's office in regards to uh, getting more vaccines available to the sh uh, seashore front towns with uh, uh, a lot of people visiting. So we're in the process of working on more vaccines. Um, more that, testing, correct? What's that? Uh, they talked about bringing, starting up more testing sites also. Right? That's correct. And then our town, so. Yeah. That, that would be good. And, yeah. and um, as far as mask mandates or um, any pushing of social distancing and wearing masks, is that something that we can be aggressive about this year? Well, it's, you, have, you have to be aggressive, but it's all based on executive order. You can't force people to do something that's not ordered to do so. So you're starting more problems if you try to enforce something that's not an executive order. So we're trying to follow the guidelines put out by the state of New Jersey so we don't have confrontations. Uh, people still have rights and if we follow the executive orders like we have in the past and maintain control that way, that's a proper way to flow through. Okay, I know that we can't, um, you know, you certainly can't ticket someone who's not doing something legal um, or mandated, but it would be wonderful if we can encourage, very, very strongly encourage and have our messaging in Belmar be one of absolute safety because now our kids are dying and that's what's happening. That's the reality. So please, they don't have a choice whether they're going to get the vaccine or not. It's not their personal decision. It's about us protecting them. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, April. I have a motion to close the public session and adjourn the meeting. Motion. Second. All in favor? Thank you, everyone.